So today we're going to talk about one of the more unique or kind of powerful dynamic star positions that we've seen someone like Ilya Ilin use. I was originally going to call this the Armenian star position, but uh, I think Ilya deserves credit here compared to the Armenian team as Ilya has been the most prolific and certainly the most successful with this, uh, you know, doping aside or whatever. So essentially, what are the kind of the characteristics of this star position or the characteristics of this dynamic start? So what you see normally lifters will do is, uh, or not normally, but a, a very common dynamic start is the lifter will set up for the barbell, hands on the bar, feet on the bar, the hips will raise up, they'll stretch their hamstrings. Uh, muscles are more likely to produce more force when they are pre-stretched. So they'll raise their hamstrings up and then swing their hamstrings down into the bar. They may pause for a second. Their knees will be at a certain angle. And as soon as the barbell moves off the ground, their knees will move backwards away from the bar and the bar will travel back towards the body. So that's a, a desirable and a very common dynamic start position. It works very well and it's very consistent and reliable. So what we'll see with the Armenian or the Ilian start position is the lifter will lift their hips up, swing their hips down into the barbell. The knees will move forward as the barbell moves off the ground or the knees will remain fixed in that position as the barbell moves up. So what we end up getting from this is a lot of quad activation or more than you would in a typical dynamic or more desirable start position. When your knees move back, you get kind of a distribution onto your upper body and more into the hamstrings. So lifters like Ilya or Gorm Minassian or and Ranik from Armenia, they'll either move their knees forward or the knees will remain in the same position as the barbell travels up as opposed to the knees moving immediately back with that barbell. Why, why might a lifter favor this or what are some of the kind of the pros of this? So as you can probably imagine, if your knees stay forward or your quads stay flexed, you end up with a more quad dominant lift. So if a lifter has shorter legs, powerful legs, very, very strong, absolute strength, Usually they'll favor this either um, kind of not incorrectly, but favor this automatically or or intuitively they'll favor this dynamic start position because their legs are stronger than potentially their upper body or their quads are stronger than maybe their hamstrings or glutes. They'll favor this as it'll feel like a powerful position off the floor. So what you might get from this in the snatch, it might not be so favorable, but in the clean, it could potentially be very, very favorable. So in the clean, what we typically want is fast off the floor and even faster again in the second pull. So if you imagine in the clean, the first pull would be 100% of a particular speed off the floor in meters per second. Then in the second pull, this will be something like 110% or maybe 105% and it'll be a very, very close ratio. So the change in speed won't be a massive. There'll certainly be a change in speed, but it won't be a very, very significant one. In the snatch, however, we'll see huge discrepancies among lifters where 100% off the floor, the difference could be up to 145% in the meter per second or speed of the second pull. So the change from the first to the second pull can be much more drastic in the snatch. Now in the clean, this powerful knees, quad dominant, leg dominant start position can be very, very useful because we can end up getting the barbell moving faster off the floor, which is very desirable in the clean if you're in good positions. Because if you move the barbell fast off the floor, you can then move it faster in the second pull. In the clean often, if you're not moving fast off the floor, the barbell is probably too heavy. And as the pull is shorter, you probably don't have enough time to get that bar moving faster in the second pull. So in the clean, it could work very well because if you're looking for a very forceful pull, if you're correct at your technique and you can correct the positions fast enough, it could work very well. We'll get to that in a second. In the snatch, however, it may not be as favorable. So again, it will feel like it's strong off the floor. However, it's not as important to move fast off the floor. In actual fact, in most people's cases or most snatches, a little bit slower, a little bit more even distribution of force across the pull is more favorable. So a slower pull off the floor. So typically what we'd be looking for in the snatch is 100% in the first pull and then somewhere in the region of 125% in the second pull. So what we might see with a lifter using this kind of aggressive dynamic start is something like 105 or maybe even 110% in the second pull compared to the first pull. So not a big discrepancy in change in speed with the second pull. So uh, most lifters, you want to see a drastic increase in the second pull speed for the snatch because you need to build up more bar height, uh, more bar speed. Whereas in the clean, we're particularly worried about an adequate height and then getting under faster. In the snatch, we're worried about maximum bar height, maximum vertical force. So this immediate start off the floor could end up giving us a, uh, a lack of room to grow for that second pull. 
So that's kind of one of the cons, essentially, is that you end up with a uh, an inability to accelerate faster in the second pull as you've essentially used up all your speed off the floor. So that first pull is as fast as you can get. And then because of the mechanical kind of position you're in the second pull, you can't get that much faster. You've essentially hit your speed limit uh, with this dynamic start. One of the other unfortunate cons with this in both of the lifts and the snatch and the clean in particular, it will affect the snatch more than the clean. But in the, the clean, what we'll see are the snatch initially off the floor. Is so normally what we'll run, right, is a S bar pad. So most of you have seen that, you want to see some variation of that. Essentially, the first pull will be a movement of the bar immediately back towards the lifter. So you want to go, the bar goes straight back towards the lifter off the ground. However, the issue with this in the kind of Ali Alien or the Armenian start. Uh, is that the barbell will often loop forward because if our knees stay in the same position or our knee stays flexed the likelihood is is the barbell will move forward off the floor and if the barbell is moving forward that means it's moving away from your center of mass so then the barbell isn't is ending up essentially feeling or acting heavier and so you could argue that this increase in the application of force is actually kind of cancelled out by the barbell feeling heavier now if you're someone if you're an absolute beast like Ilya or Gormanassian, you're very, very strong and you can possibly compensate for this. But however, most lifters who favor this have typically shorter legs, so shorter tibias, and they have less time to correct. So essentially that barbell will have to go back at some point. So if you start off looping away, that barbell will have to come back towards you. And so if you have very short tibias, uh, like Ilya would do, you will have less time to correct that barbell. So it's an actual fact, probably a style of lifting that would suit taller lifters with longer tibias. However, they will never do the style of start is because they have piss poor legs and are very weak and are shit at weightlifting. Hey. <laughs> so typically we'll see these taller lifters won't favor the style of position naturally or intuitively because their legs are generally weaker. So this won't feel like a good style of start position. However, they will likely be the style of lifter or the lifter with the anatomy who will have this favor them more because they will have more time to correct and more time to move that barbell backwards. So typically what we see then is lifters who do favor this end up with a forward first pull and essentially then this can obviously hugely mess up the rest of the lift, which is not something we want. We want the initials first pull to work very well. So what, what does this kind of mean for you as a, an amateur or recreation lifter, uh, essentially, and especially to any of my lifters who watch this, don't you dare try this. Don't even don't even think about it. This this is this is for basically no one, I would say. I would never recommend this. We would never teach this style of lifting. Um, it was just something that would kind of happen as lifters get better if it really did suit them. And even then it would work better mostly in the clean and would not be a better option in the snatch um, even though we do see gore and anranic and ranic i hope i'm saying that okay and anranic their snatches are quite strong and even their cleans are quite strong as well because you can see that this it can favor that but for most people especially most amateur lifters may not have the strength or the speed to correct the lift and they may not have the skill to adjust for the lift one of the other major cons of this is it can be very, very inconsistent style of start position. So typically it's more of a grip and rip essentially as people like to think what Ilya does, even though obviously he has practiced this for literally thousands upon thousands of lifts. So for most people, this can end up adding more variables and we want the least amount of variables every time we lift because we want to practice the same lift each time so we can practice and improve upon each phase of the lift. So when you make a mistake, they can go, we need to fix this. And so if we keep everything the same, the more likely your mistake is to happen, the more likely you can correct and adjust your mistake. So this kind of start position may not allow for this or it adds more variables and it makes it more likely that you won't end up correcting this lift or correcting your mistakes as this will add more variables. Uh, so it's not a recommendation to do this. I think it's just an interesting thing to talk about. It's an interesting observation about weightlifting technique. You might, and it's might worth talking about sometimes, you know, we do talk about lifters kind of, um, you know, the realities of doping. It's probably favored by lifters who do dope as they will have an excess of force and they can compensate for the inadequacies in technique like we talk about sometimes, you know, in our weightlifting commentaries, which we do. Um, you can get away with more discrepancies in technique if you are taking more gear, essentially. It allows you to overcome these and so it's kind of one of those kind of idiosyncrasies of taking gear is the fact that you can kind of compensate for shit or technique and this might be why we see 
uh, this kind of style of lifting. So two of those three lifters that I named have tested positive. Gore hasn't tested positive, but he has snatched 216 kilos, so we can make our own inferences from that. But Anne Rannick and Ilya obviously have both tested positive. I think Anne Rannick tested positive when he was like 17. He was snatching like 115, 150 as a youth or something. So it probably favors a style of lifter who has very, very strong legs. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. Uh, I think about technique a lot. Uh, something I like to think about and I do like to talk about it. So if you'd like me to keep doing more stuff like this, I will anyway. I don't even care. Fuck you guys. But essentially, if you can think of any lifter who I haven't mentioned who uses this style of dynamic start, let me know. Uh, Gore, Ilya, and some of the Armenian lifters were the first people to come to mind and talk about this style of technique. So uh, I think it's quite interesting. I wouldn't recommend this, but it's certainly something to pay attention to for your own lifting. Thanks, guys. By the way, if you are still watching, we have Masterclass series running at the moment. So the first Masterclass series is a lecture uh, where we'll be doing on back squats. So we're going to do a Masterclass on back squatting, programming, technique, difference between weightlifting, powerlifting, general strength. The first lecture is full up and at the time of recording, the second left lecture, the overflow lecture is half full. So we'll be announcing the date for the overflow lecture this week. Uh, if you want to sign up for it, send us an email. It's 30 euro per price of admission. The limited numbers per lecture, because a lot of the lecture, or this, the kind of latter half of the lecture, will be us interacting with you and figuring out your problems. And we're going to talk to you through them and see if we can help you get a little bit of a plan or some thought process around fixing that. So if you want to join, we will keep scheduling overflow lectures as long as keep, people keep contacting us before the start of the first lecture. So there is technically an unlimited number of overflow lectures. So don't hesitate. Send us an email if you want to get in on that second or that first overflow lecture. Thanks, guys.